Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 168. Day, day 3168, the 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the 3rd edition, 3rd edition, day 168, we are in the process of solving the problems from the two practice tests that you will find at the very end of the book. We are in the second exam right now, second test, on page number 495. Please turn to it, on page 495, problem number 21. Make sure the book is in front of you, turn to page 495 and read the problem to yourself. Don't depend on my reading it to you. Okay. Problem number 21, it says, of the people in a certain survey, of the people in a certain survey, 58% were at most 40 years, at most 40 years old, 58%, and a survey was done, and in this survey we found that 58% of the people said that they were at most 40 years old. They, they go on to say this, the 70% of the people were found to be at most 60 years old, at most 60 years old. They further tell us that if 252 people in the survey were more than 40 years old and at most 60 years old, in other words, in other words, they, they, in other words, we have 252 people in the survey who were found to be between the ages of 40 and 60 years old. 252 such people. The question simply is, how many people were surveyed? How many people were surveyed? So let's begin then, shall we? So here we have. 70% of the people said that they were at most 60 years old, 58% of the people said that they were at most 40 years old, which implies, which in turn implies, if you were to take the difference, we get a 2 here, which implies that 12% of people, 12% of the people, 12% 12 people, 12 of people surveyed were between the ages of 40 and 60 years, 12 percent. But we also told that there were 252 such people in the survey, which means, which means that 12 percent that we just found here has to equal 252, 252 people. Let's work on it, shall we? If 12 percent is that amount, that in turn implies, that in turn implies that 1 percent of the amount, 1 percent of the one amount, must be one twelfth of that. 252, 252 divided by 12. 252 divided by 12. And since I did not leave myself much room, let me write a little bit lower so we can actually work on it. That implies, that in turn implies that 1% must equal 252 over 12. Let's work on it, shall we? See what, let's see what we find. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. We'll keep it simple. They're both even number. Let's start, let's start with 2. If we divide top and bottom by 2, 12 has 6 twos. 2 has 1 2, 5, 5 has 2 twos, 2 twos are 4, after we take away 4 from the 5 we have a remainder of 1, 1 goes and joins the 2 becomes a 12 and 12 has 6 twos. In other words 252 divided by 2 is 126, which makes perfect sense because 26 plus 26 is 52. Let's divide one more time by 2 because there's still even numbers, let's divide one more time by 2, so this will become 3 and 12 has 6 twos and 6 has 3 twos. So far so good, you still with me? Let's go one more round. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. So that 3 will disappear finally. We got rid of it. And 63, 6 has 2 3's and 3 has 1 3. In other words, in other words, after all said and done, after all said and done, what we find is that 252 divided by 12 is exactly 21. And that represents 1 person. That represents 1 person. But we're not interested in finding out what is 1 person of the total, total amount. We want to find out the 100%. If you want to find out the 100%, multiply both sides by 100. Multiply both sides by 100. Now technically, if you multiply both sides by 100, we have this, this part also, that should also have been multiplied by 100, but uh, that's, okay, that's all right. So, if 1% one is 21, if 1% one is 21, 100% must be 2100. It's just 100 times 21, that's your answer. 2100 is the answer. And that's the answer choice.
2100. What on such choice would that be? What number was this? Number 21. That's answer choice B. Answer choice B, and if you're interested, if you're curious as to how people did, did, did on this question when it appeared in the real exam, about three fifths of the people got, got it right, 58% got it right, 42% missed it. Let's do one more, number 22. Number 22. One more time, technically this is not correct because once we multiply this part by 100 and that part by 100, then this middle part should have been multiplied by 100. Technically, I should have squeezed 100 in there also. Now, now it's all, now it's all legitimate. 1% of that amount is this, which is equal to 21. Therefore, 100% must be 100 times this amount, which is 100 times this amount, which is 100 times that amount. That's how it goes. Number 22 says, number 22 is a very simple question, it simply says, they tell you that x is positive, which is fine and dandy, we're not going to worry about it. It says, which of the following, because it plays no role, you understand? Which of the following is equal to 1.25 percent, 1 and 1 quarter percent, 1 and 1 quarter percent or 1 and 1.25 percent, of x. Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's start with something very basic, very fundamental. Let's start with something very fundamental, which is, what does this word mean? What does this word literally mean? Percent. What does it mean literally? Can we dissect it? Are we able to dissect this word? Break it up into parts? Literally it means per 100. Per 100. Which is same as saying out of 100, out of 100. Hence, hence 37 percent would mean, hence 37 percent would mean 37 out of 100. If somebody tells you, if somebody talks about, if somebody talks about 70 percent, that simply means 70 out of 100. If somebody talks about half a percent, if somebody talks about half a percent, it would simply be one half divided by 100. And then of course you can work on it and that reduces to 1 over 200, but that's not the point. The point is percent simply means over over 100, out of 100. Half a percent means half divided by 100. Do we understand it? Or if we understand that part, we can begin the process. We are interested in 1.25 percent. So let's begin then. One point, why does it have percent percent repeating? What the hell is the matter with me? It's 1.25 percent, you understand? So, 1.25 percent simply means, just like 10 percent means 10 out of 100, 37 percent means 37 out of 100, it simply means 1.25, 1.25 out of 100. That's what it means. Let's get, rid, let's get rid of this decimal. I don't like dealing with decimal, do you? I don't like dealing with decimals, I hate them. How can we get rid of this decimal? We can get rid of this 0.25 and make it into a whole number by multiplying top and bottom by 100. In other words, if we were to multiply 1.25 to 1 by 100, it becomes 125, and we can get rid of the decimal. We can't simply just, and, but we can't simply just multiply 1.25 by 100 and be done with it. Whatever we do at the top, we must do the same thing at the bottom in order for this quantity not to change. Do you understand? So, 1.25 times 100, it boils down to 125, 125 over, and what do, we, what do we have at the bottom? We have, on the bottom we have 100 times 100. 100 times 100. Just leave it like this, don't fuss about it. Just leave it just like that. 100 times 100. Are you still with me? Don't multiply out 100 times 100. Do you understand? Just leave it like that, as I said already three times. Let's reduce it. We have, we have 125 over 100 times 100. Let's divide top and bottom by 25. Let's divide top and bottom by 25. Do you know how many 25 does 125 have? Of course 125 has 525 because we, everybody everybody knows that 100 is made up of 100 is made up of 425. If 100 has 425, 425 is 100, then 525 must be 100. Let's divide top and bottom by 25. So 125 is made up of 5, 525 and 100 is made up of 425. So far so good? 
Now we see that 5 is a multiple of 100, or rather 100 is a multiple of 5. So let's multiply, let's divide top and bottom by 5. This 5 will going to go away, it becomes 1. 10 has, 10 has 2 5s and 0 has no 5. This 0 has no 5. In other words, in other words, 100 divided by 5 is 20, of course, big news. So what are we left with? We are left with, on the top, we are left with 1. 1 on the top, let's continue this here, on the top, we are left with 1. And on the bottom, we have 4 times 20. 4 times 20. In other words, 1 over 80. 1 over 80 represents 1.25%. 1.25%. In other words, what we just learned, let's put it on the top so it doesn't get too low. So what we just learned is this. What we just learned is, what we just learned is, 1, this is 80, 1 80th. 1 80th of something, anything, 1 80th of any number, 1 80th of any quantity, 1 80th of something, 1 80th of any quantity is simply 1 over, or rather, yeah, 1 80th of, 1 80th of something is simply equal to 1 80th of anything. Doesn't matter what quantity it is, if you take 1 80th of that quantity, what 1 80th of, of something would equal, 1.2, 1.25% of that quantity. Do you understand? Instead of saying something, instead of saying something, let's give this quantity a name. What should we call it? I feel, I feel very creative today. I'm going to call it X. Right. One eightieth of X is 1.25 of X. So what is our answer? The question was. What is 1.25% of x? The answer is 1 80th of x. The answer is 1 80th. 1 80th of x. Of means times. You can write it like this, or we can write it in a little bit more of a refined form, simply writing it 80 over x over 80. x over 80 is the answer. But so is this one, and so is that one, and so is that one, but this is how it appears in the book, in the answer choices. x over 80, what answer choice would that be? Let's answer choice A. Let's answer choice A. Are you curious to find out how people did? I am. Let's find out. Aha. That is not a good news. It turns out, it turns out that fewer than half, fewer than half the people had luck on it. More than half the people, 55% of people, got it wrong when it appeared in the real exam. Alas. See you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.